So I'm going to start off by saying um, I designed a system here using the latest laser technology with projectors that you won't have to service for over 10 years. Ooh, we like that. And that have the highest contrast ratio available. So there's no bulbs. Uh-huh. There's a laser light source uh -huh. that does not burn out. And that's 20 years, or 10 years, that's its half-life. Oh, I'd say we like that, right? So you most likely move on. <laughs> Um, the thing is, there's a price tag involved with that because they have a 4,000 lumen currently available, but unfortunately Sony offers two lenses. I don't think the lens that they do offer for the long throw will be compatible with your situation. And the other lens that they offer is a 0.8 uh, lens, which is an on-axis lens for use for rear projection. And since we won't be modifying the wall structure and doing rear projection in this project, it'll be front projection. I don't recommend that we go with that, and I'm going to recommend that you wait until you uh, make the final decision, until this projector is available in September at the latest. And we do have options. We have a leasing company. If the price tag is a little bit more than you were expecting, we do have a leasing company you can work with. So you can lease the equipment, and then when the lease is over, you can opt to buy it for $1. Uh, we have a lot of clients that do that, a lot of houses of worship that do that. So we have uh, commercial clients that do that. Yeah, so when you, whenever someone says that, that means it's expensive. So what's it estimated to be? The entire cost of, of, of yeah, the system? The, the, the entire cost of the system is on the um, uh, last few pages of this document here. That's right, right, right to it. How much is that? Oh, uh, I don't memorize prices. Um, but that projector with the lens and everything for both of them, including the lenses, and the ceiling hardware is twenty-eight thousand five thirty-four. Okay. Now this, so I understand that that's that's two projectors, the laser projectors, mm -hmm. installed and wired and operational. No, that's just the equipment. That doesn't okay. include the labor. Okay. That's yeah, just, it says the, here the, just grand, the hardware. The total grand total is sixty-four thousand seven hundred thirty. Right. But the other things to tell us about. Oh yes, I got other right. toys. I'm just curious if I can. Okay, so totally this includes the high-end laser projectors that aren't available till September. Yes. We wait for them, and and then now that does that include upgrading our equipment in in here to digital, or you're getting to that? Yeah, yeah. So the next line items that we're going to be talking about are the uh, projection screens. The projection screens would be front projection. I offer two models of them. One is a borderless model, which I do not recommend because it, it, whenever you have a black border around a screen, it makes the whole image pop just a little bit more. It provides that contrast, that barrier. Mm -hmm. So I show two projection screens in here, one with the zero quantity, but I show you the price for it, and the borderless is more expensive. And then the second one is the one that I recommend, which is a little bit less expensive. It's 16 foot wide, 9 foot high. So it's a perfect 16-9 aspect ratio. Um, and so that cost for the two screens um, that I recommend with the black border is thirty-two seventy-four. That's on top of the sixty-four. No, no. Okay, that's that in the six. The that's, that's in the sixty-four. Part of the 64. Yeah, the sixty-four thousand is the grand. That's the grand total. That's installed. Right. right. That's done. Done. Um, there's not only installed, but the um, sixty-four. <clears throat> no, that, she didn't offer you the priority um, service plan. Oh, she did. She offered you the one, the first year of the priority service plan. There are options, and that's that thirty-one hundred dollars. So that would be uh, the first year priority service plan, which would be um, eight-hour response, and all you wouldn't have to pay anything. Um, and that uh, she would, she would be able to cover the warranty a little bit better. I do the design. I let other people deal with warranty issues that's just too right. much for one person to handle you know that we have specialists that deal with warranties and uh, replacing and they'll be able to explain that i'm sorry i can't address that and that's something that she would usually address <coughs> so how much is that plan that is thirty one hundred dollars and that's on year. top of the 64. no that's included in the 64. that's in the 64. Yes, um, the next thing we talk i'd like to talk about is the projector distribution um so the, uh, in the item beneath the projection distribution, there's a video switch. And the output of that video switch comes out as H or DVI. So this is? Well, the output of that would hit the video, uh, a DA, 
we would just split the signal and then use extenders to take it up to the projector over a single shielded category cable. So we don't have any bulky cable, standard cable. There's a receiver that's mounted at the projector. The receiver has HDMI video. It's 4K capable in case you ever upgraded, but that's what they're offering now. Everything's going to 4K. And then it also has an RS-232 port, so we can control the projector. That means you do it um, later on. We'll talk about how a control system, so all of your menuing controls, all done from a touch panel. Your power on, power off. If you ever need to adjust the image, focus, or zoom, it would all be, or look at any statistics. It would all be done from a touch panel and be displayed on the screens. So that's your extension, that section, and that's a uh, low cost of fourteen seventy five. Then for the, the next, switcher? No, that's for the um, uh, distribution of the output okay. switcher and getting signal to the projector. And we have a 330 foot maximum distance. Yeah, they say we can actually cheat, probably get up to 360. Okay. But 330 foot is the guideline. Um, and then we talked about the video switcher. This is one of my real favorite video switchers for small houses of worships or houses of worships on budgets. I also put in a lot of commercial installations. It's a feature now you're packed. About this? Yes, sir. It's a feature packed um, switcher. It has three HD SDI inputs. It also has HDMI video inputs, DVI in video inputs. It's got audio inputs, so you can mix the audio. And then it also has a multi um, a window preview output that's on a DVI output. And I include a monitor. So you will not only see the preview screens of each. Is that what that is there? Yes, sir. That yeah. thing at the top right shows the multi viewer. So you'll see all the previews plus uh, the individual camera previews or input previews plus pro uh, preview for that's going to be switched to program and your program. And it also has a uh, waveform monitor uh, that you can use within it also. So you don't need external. So you can adjust all your gains from your cameras to make sure you have fairly decent uh, video signals that are matching when you're switching between them. Since your cameras don't have any uh, CCUs, which are camera control units, most of uh, video um, uh, production houses use CCUs. So the operator doesn't have to adjust the iris or the gain or the color balance. It's all done in the control room. And then one man in the control room using a waveform monitor takes and basically balances the video from the different cameras and during the production if the lights were to change and the gain structure the cameraman doesn't have to worry about especially when you're using volunteers uh, the camera the uh, operator in the control room can adjust the gain of the from the uh, switcher no it, this would be if the cameras you had had ccus gotcha. camera control units yeah. but here you'll be have to be able to uh, use your intercom and call out to the cameraman and right. say, bring your gain down. Which is what our bit, current situation bring is. Bring your iris yeah. down a little bit. So it's a little bit more of a manual process you have now. But you can always shoot towards that and, you know, shoot, shoot towards that goal in the future to have a CCU. Uh, it seems like... Uh, if we get this switcher, it mm -hmm. sounds to me that it's going to be getting rid of... Your little Panasonic in there. Well, not only the Panasonic, but also the... Cause it's, this distributes the audio and combines it all that kind of stuff. So we can go directly from this to your Yamaha to Mixing Council. Free the PA. Okay. Well, I'm saying it for recording purposes. Oh, recording. Yeah. Yeah. So we can, because right now we have it basically where the audio is coming in separate, the video is coming in separate, and it's being connected via converters and all that kind of stuff. So this would re be replacing all those converters and all that kind of stuff because it can go directly into this and then out right so this combines the audio and the video for the recording if you're strictly doing that for recording and then you would what you would do is you probably split that send the audio back to the pa if you're doing any playback how often uh, currently i saw that you have a bunch of converters to hd sdi right and so basically, I'm counting on you having all, presenting HDSDI to the switcher, right? That you have all of that in place. Okay. 
What, uh, in September, uh, if, if we started the work in September, the devices are available, how long does it take, David, from start of, of uh, construction to finish, and, and, and then tell me what's not included in the 61,000 that we would have to take care of? Okay, good question. Um, I estimate that once we bring the system down, it's going to take us about a week. Okay. Like Sunday to Sunday kind of week, or five working days. Okay. So you could start on a Monday and be done by Friday. We actually start a little before. I, I, the key words were: once I bring the system down, what we can do is we can come in here and do some pre-wiring without yeah. bringing the system down, and that would be getting the cabling up to the projector locations and getting the mounts and everything on the pipes where we're where I would like to put them. Right. But then once I bring the system down and take the projectors out and hang the new projector, about a week. Okay. So as part of our team has already come in here and have touched your speakers and have them the way they're currently at. But what I see as a problem is your rack wiring. Your rack wiring does not meet our standards. For us to come in here and start touching this, as soon as we touch it, we own any problems that arise. I've included labor to clean up your rack. And that's the only way we can actually proceed with this because if my guys come in here and they pull a wire, they pull a connector off because that wiring is not secure, then we're going to own the problem. And well, so it's not a lot of money. That right? also includes some uh, rack wiring devices, cable harnessing devices right. that we can put across so we can get the it rack, off the floor. address the wire. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Bundle it properly. Just come in and clean that rack up. You mean this stuff under here? <laughs> yeah, this is a bit of a mess. All right, I just got some good video of the rat's nest back there. That's really it. Uh, we would come in. Uh, we would also like to see any documentation that you currently have on your system, wiring numbers, because as we clean up the rack, we'll verify the documentation. If you have it in AutoCAD, we'll take and add the proper documentation to it. Uh, we will provide you uh, AutoCAD drawings of the new video system that we're adding, including elevation drawings, and we will come back in and do one more measurement before we actually order the lenses and uh, make sure that the uh, lens thrower is proper and they have chosen the right lens. David, I, the, uh, the things that aren't included, I just read quickly through your scope of work, is we have to, uh, besides providing the obvious things, we have to provide the conduit and, and the wiring uh, to the location. The the electric, uh, and the powers, uh, I think you told me, is just uh, 115, 230 volt. Uh, a 20 amp circuit uh, would be more than adequate. We share it for both, proje both projectors, correct? To, to handle both of them or yes, each of them? No, to handle both of them. Okay. And the, the conduit can be plastic, obviously. It doesn't have to be a hard. So the, the location we're talking about currently has light fixtures fairly close by. So is it is it possible, and we'd have to check this out, that those circuits that are up there operating those lights might be able to also handle a projector? If you wanted to plug that circuit into a non-dim circuit, that would work. If it is on a dimmer, yeah, that then, then would oh yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, that's that's no. <coughs> on on timing. I understand that once everything's basically out of the way and you start installing, that takes about five working days. Mm -hmm. So, with the taking down of the current equipment and fixing all the wiring here. Uh, what's the time frame for you roughly estimate for the tear down and the put up? Before we actually bring the system down, I'm thinking we're going to be in here about three days before that. Okay. And that would be to clear, clear this around. up? Mm -hmm. Okay. How long would it take to take the system down? To take the system down? Mm -hmm. Just have to unplug it. Yeah. I mean, we're not, we got the existing projectors and screens, that's all the rear projection. That, that right, right. you know, that you, can, you, you I don't have any budget to remove any of that. Okay. I have budget to hang the new screens in front of your current openings. Okay. So if we want to close those openings in, uh, or even put something so somebody doesn't fall through it one day, 
uh, then that would be our expense. Yes, sir. Yeah. And huh? that could be. So that's that's one issue. So, uh, but if we were, if we if we were to use a movie from outside of it, we would, would have words cut off and stuff. Words cut off, faces cut off, some things. Anything. The, that's what is this? It's the aspect ratio. These are what's called four three aspect uh, ratios. No, I'm with him. And then the sixteen nine aspect ratio is like your your standard, standard. flat panels. No, I'm with him. I'm with him. So that would be the one issue. Mm -hmm. Another issue is the because it's well not because it's rear projection but it's an uh, older system and so the brightness and the colors and the, all that kind of stuff is just somewhat it's muted yeah it's not working the way we want it to so um, between that and uh, I mean what the pixels issues? right now you have a very low pixel count. So you're not getting full benefit from any of your high definition cameras or anything. Gotcha. Everything is being scaled and the signal is being manipulated. It's not a true image of what you should have. I, I agree, but that's like saying, you know, I, I, I drive a Chevy versus a Cadillac. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they both have, they all have four tires and they all have doors and they get me there with air conditioning. <laughs> okay. That's, that's, cor that's When was the last time you tried to get your projector serviced? Not since I've been here. And you're not going to get them serviced. They're no longer supported. Yeah, I couldn't even find it online. They're but the, the other problem up there, Jeff, is that if we were to convert that to 916, which you could do, you'd have a black band at the top and bottom where you could cover it in, you could figure that out, but you'd end up with a smaller picture. Plus, the projector that you would need, the rear projector system, would have to move back about three or four feet or put a mirror system in. And that's, it's, it's big dollars to do either one of those. Absolutely, but yeah. I'm, I'm speaking from the standpoint of right. what's wrong with what you have today. Right. And what does the sixty thousand dollars buy me that people can go? Yeah. Well, I'll tell I mean, you what. It, well, I'll tell you what it gets you. Just visually, it's four more feet to the left, same height, but four more feet to the left with a much better picture. That's, that's what it gets you. So it's a, it's the wow impact is what you're getting for sixty thousand. Okay. Plus, we'd be upgrading to digital. This is all analog right, right. now. It's it's okay. old technology. So we have the capability of sending HD out here, but it's, it's, I mean, not it, it, digital out here, but we're not, we're sending analog out here and it's, uh, it's old technology. To, to acknowledge what you're saying, yeah. you're correct. We could be, we could keep driving the old Chevy. We could, mm -hmm. it takes more work. That's yeah. what it is. And I think that the question would be is that how much work does it save you? Because that's something that people can put their hands on. Yeah. So I'll answer that one. <laughs> As the people on the TV screen are going, whoa, don't spin your well, head so fast. It, saves, it, actually, it actually saves a lot of work because uh, the places where I constantly have to fight it, obviously when I'm creating stuff, so anytime I'm, I have to create something in 16.9 because everything back here is 16.9 pushing to 4.3. Mm -hmm. So I create it in 16.9 and then I have to kind of put my guides for 4.3. So that's just a, a, a little, you know, that's one aspect of extra work. The other aspect is, while we have camera people uh, typically not experienced, right. not that experienced, uh, we have to constantly try to tell them, you know, zoom in, zoom out. We can't get uh, the full picture that we would like to get because we're having cut off. Yeah, yeah it's not what you see, what you get. It's kind of guessing <laughs> in some it respects. It is, yeah. A yeah. lot of times I'm just guessing on whatever. So. With people on the cameras, they see 16.9 on their viewer, on the on the actual camera, but we have to tell them back here, oh, you you know, his hands are cut off or yeah, you you got know, him if too he, close. If he starts, Get away. If he starts to walk, he leaves they, your frame, but not their frame. Exactly. So then he walks out of frame here, and then you know we're like, hey, you gotta stay with him, blah blah blah. So put a square on the floor for him. Yeah. <laughs> we'll say we'll see if he stays in there. Yeah. Right? Yeah, um, I'm, at, I'm at the edge. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the. Uh, okay. that's, that's another aspect where it's problematic. Um, and then as far as the system is, goes, uh, like they said, you know, the manufacturer and all this kind of stuff, that really causes an issue. So when we have any kind of crash or any kind of issue, which we had like total Last breakdown, uh, it was like, yeah, it was like three weeks ago. And literally the, the thing that made it happen, I don't know what happened with the computer. For some reason it got blue screen. Anyway, that was a separate issue. But it happened at the same time. But somebody was trying to fix the camera, and they unplugged one cord, and it was all just we couldn't figure out wh who did what or what you know. Just and locked everything up. And it did, and so when the system is a, is a rat's nest, that's what right now currently that's a huge issue okay. uh, as far as 
troubleshooting when things go wrong. So those are the three main factors of, of work. And currently, I mean, we've had to pay quite a bit of money so far in contract work just to get somebody to come in and say, hey, this is, you know, uh, I had to have Shane come in and, and basically uh, cut and remake uh, the SDI, some of the SDI cables because the cameras weren't reaching there. But that's all taken care of now. It's taken care of, but I mean, we're going to constantly have to be like, okay, here's another $500, here's another $600, here's another, you know, whatever, just to come and fix one little issue. Getting back to your car, you sure you got four wheels, steering wheel, and the door operates, but every once in a while the engine shuts down. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. This system has 200,000 miles on it. So where's the cameras going to, or, yeah. the, or the projectors, where are they going to be mounted, David? Uh, show us that. Okay, yeah, I see the green dot. Okay. Well, it just kind of fits in there with the speakers. Yeah, uh, it, will it be about the same color as the speakers? Uh, it, they come in two colors, black or white. Well, we do it in black. Uh, that just blends right in with the speakers. Yeah. Um, it's. We're probably, Jeff, going to have to take out that metal blue light, uh, or are we, David? Uh, yeah, the one underneath the screen. It's, it works with that one, but do um, you, th you think we can leave it, or will it have to be removed? Isn't that controllable? Uh, yeah, you can take the bulbs out, <laughs> or you can flip the switch. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if, th if uh, both of these, I would probably turn off at service, I don't know, for pre-service or something. But you can see I think those are tied in with all these blue is. lights right here. Can, separate it. can we? Can yeah, I guess we could. You can see right here how it doesn't provide a lot of wall splash. Right. Okay. So any light that this is producing on the new frame, it can hit the bottom of the frame and not really hit the screen. It could also, also back ambient noise. Okay, show so us that again, David, because I, I didn't no, get that on tape. No, 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 uh, the no. the 9 by 16, could you kind of shape that out there to show? No. All right, so it's 9 by 12 now, 9 feet by 12 feet. It'll be 9 by 16 Fire. feet over day. on that side. And on this screen over here, yeah, that nicely fills in that wall. And over on this screen here to uh, to the right, same thing. You got 9 feet by 12 feet, and an additional 4 foot to the left gives you 9 by 16. Yeah, good good use of that wall space. Yeah, They're, the prototypes are being you know tested and rolled out. So what my one of my concerns is, if it's a brand new product, mm -hmm. uh, then. We kind of wind up with the same sort of issue as this, but on the other end, it may be so new that no. what, I mean. No, it, it's still the same power supplies and everything that Sony uses. That's the great thing. Sony is not a company that just throws something out there. They're like your Fords, your Chevys. They test it thoroughly before it's released. If there's an issue, they do the same thing. They support the product. Not only that, because it's Whitlock that's selling it to you, they give us priority support over just about any other partner because of our size and things. So when I call up,